My little bench rack is done. I refurbished it, washed it, polished it, fixed it, improved it. And here it is now, ready to show you how it looks. Is it ready for the Becco treatment, which isn't always going to be pretty? Or is it not? Well, let's find out. Yes, hello, my yeah. vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? This is my bench vac. Remember the unboxing? Well, I couldn't leave it at the back of the queue because obviously this has to earn its keep. This is what I'm going to use to clean out every other vacuum that passes through my hands. So it needs to be pretty flipping top of its game. What have we got? Well, we'll start with all this lot, and then we can get rid of it. I have, at the minute, the tools like this. In fact, if you remember, the cuff was split. And I haven't replaced it, because why would I put a decent cuff on this? I could put on something I could sell. So I just changed the tape and put in black insulation tape on it, rather than gaffer saying, it'll be fine. This will be fitted to it for most of the time. And I have a tatty Dyson dusting brush and a tatty purple Dyson crevice tool for now. Do the job. I, I'll work out what other tools I need when I need them, really. So, that's all I've really done to those. Is this where the magic has happened. And if I remove the cable, you shall note that I'm no longer getting black hands just from touching the flex. Crikey, it was... It was filthy. The flex is now beautiful and white again. Lovely white flex. The plug is also much, much cleaner. A nice perma plug, which will keep that on there. Nice perma plug made in England for the plug enthusiast. Maybe we should start a game. Maybe we should try date these. I don't know, this is probably from the 1990s. They're nothing about them. <coughs> so yes, a nice white flex. Moving on to the nice orange top. Find it a bit closer so you can see it in a bit more detail. Because it's come up really, really well. Number 148 has had its life saved. Oh, I want this to run. There we go has had its life saved, really. It is heavily, heavily used. There is no question about it. But it's come up really, really well. Obviously, it's never going to be a shiny machine. It doesn't have to be. Also, actually, a point to note, I changed the switch. Yes, the white switch, A, was very stiff. You could tell it wasn't clicking as well as it could. B... Whoever fitted it, serviced it before Adam got hold of it and sold it to me and sold it the flipping cables to the terminals really badly. And I couldn't be bothered to sit there and you know, unsolder and pull the stuff off and crimp new cables on it. So it has a pneumatic switch on it. Also did away with the rubber cover because it's not a wet bag. I don't care. And I'm struggling with things to tell you about it. The wheels, if ever one of the wheels was snapped off, so I just took it off and left it half and half. The wheels have also been greased, so it's very manoeuvrable now. Let us have a look underneath where some magic has happened. Put that to one side for a second. The filter has... It's actually gone through the washing machine three times because it was a bit grubby and it always went through. It was fixed onto this part here. In fact, this part here does come off. There we go. It was fixed onto this part here with a wire that ran through. It's, it snapped when I took it off, but it was fixed anyway. However, it's actually, you know, it's held on 
reasonably well, especially if it's going to be being sucked upwards. You know, I didn't see the point in faffing around. I can stick a massive cable tie around there, but it's going to get used. It's going to need washing. So, for now, I'm not bothering. There are, you know, things that I could do to this, which we'll come on to in a minute. This is the underside of the machine. If you remember that really tatty bit of foam that was there. Well, it doesn't look that much better, I'll be honest. What this is, is foam strips. I had it, I, I bought it years ago to do my green centertronic system too, to seal the motor cover back in because the original stuff perished. And I had loads left, but it was self-adhesive and it all failed. So what I did is I spent about an hour with the hot glue gun sticking it all around there and my goodness is it way 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 better than the original solution even if i do say so myself this is where things go down here a little bit because as you can see it has a paper bag in it which i'm not taking off because it's a sod to get on that is the width mm -hmm. of the inner bit um, I don't actually think it, I think it was supposed to be used bagless. And I tried, oh lord did I try, no chance, zero chance at all. The other problem is there's not enough on this side to just cable tie it on. So I need to do some research, I need to measure this, I need to measure it, go through the bag catalogue and work out what else took whatever width this is. And then work out if there, were, if there was ever a HEPA flow alternative because the, the, what's going to go in here isn't going to like a paper bag. I'm fully prepared for that. That's one of the reasons why I haven't actually fixed the filter on. My other idea for the filter is to rip apart one of these and then cable tie that around the top of it to make a better filter. And I'll be honest, part of me thinking I might do that and just use the solid thing badness and just bash it out. A lot. This isn't going to be a well loved machine, but I'm going to try and get a better bag for it. Because, you know, it's just sympathetic, isn't it? The other slightly annoying thing is that the handle doesn't sit straight to the switch, which is there. There are only four screws holding the handle on, none of which line up with the switch, which is a little bit of a pain. Especially for those of you with OCD, I'm not that bad, I'm, I don't actually care, I'm fully prepared to have this turned around there so the switch is at the front once I get using it. But for now, we will line it up so the switch is at the back. The extra foam has made this a bit more of a squeeze to get on, but I'm classing that as a good thing. But does it still work? Well, let me show Let me show you its party trick. Whee! It spins a right round, baby, right round. Looks like an oil. I'm just about to lift it up. <laughs> the memory of Crap Henry does live on with this machine because it hasn't got the smoothest of wind downs, it has to be said. Well, I don't quite know why. I washed the fans and I put a fair bit of oil into the motor bearings. They weren't knackered, they aren't knackered, but it always helped, especially since I had it all apart to wash the fans. I can deal with a grumbly wind down on a bench back. I'll be honest, it's fine. As character. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. I'm perfectly happy with that. But the question now is how should we christen it? Because I've not got anything to take apart in this video. So I think we'll do something that needs to be done anyway to give this its first taste of dirt since it's been reset 
to move. And the way we should christen this is to do what a lot of people hate me doing, actually. How dare you clean your own cordless machines out with another vacuum? Tinko sent me this because they said I didn't need to use another vacuum cleaner to clean out my vacuum cleaner. How we laugh. But I do it because, basically, but it gives us a bit of dirt. So we should empty the V11. Which will take the bin off of. God, this is, ah! Because that's full of dust! Again! Where are we? It's actually just. Does that a lot. It's very annoying, especially since I've been using it for you know actual dirt this time, you know, to move sofas and beds and stuff. Give it a clean. <laughs> is that if you have grubby hands when you use it, which I often do, it does half show up all of the dirt and look incredibly grubby. It's not the nicest of things. However, let's check it out and the post motor filter is still spotless actually. It's remarkable really considering the state that the pre-motor filter is in. <laughs> where I compared this, the V11, and another flagship called the cleaner. Do stay tuned. I think yes, it's got to go it. There we go. That's the cordless cleaned out. And that is... Put it into a nice shot. This christened. It's not the sharpest thing, I'll be honest. And yes, I could have just got a Henry, but that's just boring, isn't it? Everybody got a Henry. God. Had to be a complete boring, boring, boring person to just have a Henry. Oh, that's a bit warm. As a bench fan. I've got this. Apparently, it 
Mercs and Mercedes. That's all I know. Somebody posted up a brochure which looks remarkably like it. But I found nothing refurbishing this. No date code, no stamp. There's a motor mark, which is a 750 watt motor. That's it. Naff all else. Carbon brushes also are probably over three quarters worn. But I think it's a pneumatic motor, really. And I know that the guy that sold to me, Adam, because he's got flipping loads of these, and he's been ripping the motor out and lobbing them into pneumatics. And he's successfully filed down Dyson carbons. So. I'll probably set a reminder to myself for about November to have it out. It's really easy to open, pop all those screws out, off it comes, there's the motor. Just to check it, obviously once that internal spring from the back of the carbon hits the commutator, dead. So I'll check that. But it's all right, I'll be honest, it owes me sod all. It was really, really cheap, and it's a bit of fun, and if it breaks, we'll move on and get something else. But for now, the Beko bench vac is done, ready for action, ready to clean out many other vacuum cleaners. Basically to replace Crap Heavy, who as you know has been my bench vac of choice when I used to film at my mother's. Now I don't film at my mother's, I need something else. I might change this crevice tool as well because that's going to be very annoying. But I've got loads of old random crevice tools. So there we go, apart from having to possibly find a better solution for the bags, which will, ha which will come, this is done. Deep, ready, ready for many, hopefully months, hopefully years, maybe minutes, of service, it doesn't matter, which will run it until it explodes, quite frankly, of service. Cleaning out much chod, many Dysons. Can't wait to plunge this into a stuffed up DCO7 cyclone. Although I'll hopefully have a pepper flow bag in it by then, because that's what's going to knacker it. It's the fine dust. I'm going to pull out Dysons that's going to do it. But you shall see this ad hoc many more times. I've got to clean the car this weekend, so it may get a good run. For that, who knows? Or oh, I use something else. That's the beauty of it. So the Mercedes is done, ready for use. So thank you very much for watching. In case you hadn't noticed, oh, a bit closer. This is a Saturday video. This is a Saturday video, and part of the reason it's a Saturday video is obviously we need to see it now rather than in like October. The other reason it's a Saturday video is that I've got so many videos I haven't uploaded purely because I'm scheduled up till November now and I'm not that fond of being scheduled up until November. So, possibly as a schedule, possibly randomly, I'm going to start lobbing some videos up on a Saturday at 6 o'clock. There may not be one one day. It all depends on how much content I have. Got to be a bit careful because I don't want you to see the art of something that you won't have even seen the before. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit of jiggly poke. And obviously, you may notice that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm still at my mum's. Even though we're now here. So, yeah. You'll be fine. I believe in you. So, yes. Possibly the start of an extra video a week. Possibly not. Who knows? But either way, the start of a beautiful new friendship between me and me Mercedes. So, for me, and number 148, we shall see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.